take a look to WTO to make sure the playing field is level and if somebody or one country or another does something that either against the rules or creates an imbalance, WTO is there to enforce that. We know in, in many ways what we're going to expect when we're either investing in a country or trading with a country. Its dispute settlement procedures have been incredibly valuable in resolving and trying to resolve some very difficult uh, commercial disputes. Especially in the current economic climate where many, many countries wish to try and protect uh, their own businesses. With all of the way in which the world trades with each other, Brazil exporting to China, importing from the U.S. Prior to the WTO, we really weren't able to go in and invest in China, and now it's one of our fastest growing countries. And so opening up markets is critically important for business. It's very important that we have open doors to allow us to trade with all our partners in various countries around the world. You also need things that it's achieved, such as the basic telecoms agreement. If we didn't have the WTO and some of its uh, achievements, then a company like BT probably couldn't be doing the things that it's doing in some of the states in Latin America and Asia, for example. We're able to penetrate markets all over the world that really even out our business, and it's really important for us. I think the Doha Round is another step in a very important sequence. We all tend to forget the superb work that GATT and the WTO have done. We strongly support the Doha round of negotiations. Um, we think there's a lot of work that can be done in the area of agriculture, in the area of industrial tariffs and services. If we see Doha completed ultimately, we would see tariffs drop on a lot of our machine exports among countries significantly. A successful round really is very important to all the citizens of the world and all the businesses of the world. Uh, particularly now when you've got some states, some regions, tipping on the edge of a return to recession. We calculate that if the Doha round was concluded, it would inject a stimulus of about $350 billion into the global economy. What business is looking for is a solution. Um, and when we get that solution, then business can, can drive forward. But we really need governments to come together and, and find a breakthrough. I think business can help WTO by being very clear on basically what it needs from WTO. I think sometimes business can go forward with a very long shopping list. I believe uh, business has a key role in trade policy making, in particular in uh, grounding trade policy making in reality. We need business to be at the table, first of all to give the WTO the intelligence about what is really happening out there, about, about what the trade statistics are really telling us about new patterns of world trade. No matter where we are in the world, whether it's Japan, China, Europe, United States, we have a big influence and a big responsibility. And that means uh, speaking up for the advantages of open, fair and free trade. And it also means once a particular market is opened up, standing ready to invest and to create jobs and bring benefits to the uh, citizens in that particular market. I think one area where business can help is in, is in collaboration. Uh, both with governments, with the World Trade Organization and, and, and other parties to actually ensure both innovation uh, but also ensure that we can get our goods to market and we can help to feed the world, uh, protect the world and also um, to ensure that we start doing things around the environment to reduce our environmental footprint. I think the, the trade discussions have to continue to press for tariff reduction, that's obvious. But also tackling the less visible means of protectionism. One of the areas that we think needs additional focus is the area of services. And not just services in the way we think about them in that we'll make a commitment in one area and move on to another area, but looking at the, the entirety of it. In addition to retail and distribution services, what about uh, express delivery? What about ports? What about trade facilitation? How do we link those all together so that you can really leverage global value chains? To drive innovation you need strong intellectual property rights. I think that's going to be very very important going forward. E-commerce, uh, consistent competition rules, uh, and in the sectors having common regulation in for example pharmaceuticals or medical devices would be very helpful. If we can get all of those things, it gives business confidence, it gives a level of predictability and certainty, 
and therefore in turn it will accelerate investment. So I think that will propel global trade as well and create jobs. Mm -hmm.